Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. This is literally the first one of its batch? Yep. That's cool. All right, Tristan, give us some information. What are we building here? We're building the 2020, 2022 HD Big Ripper 001, first one in production. That is cool. So that's like, essentially like SE's most popular bike, but with disc brakes added, right? Yeah, so this one is like, a lot of the dealers say this is going to be like the biggest bike that SE has ever made because it's already like the most popular and most known bike and then they put disc brakes on it and everyone loves disc brakes so oh yeah that's an HD ripper HD ripper I can't resist I'm throwing in the Oh, yes. That's why I couldn't resist joining. I love good looking head tube badges. Yeah. Nice looking cranks and sprocket. Changing that out though. Three wheel disc, that's. That's like a really nice solid quality hub. Oh, we'll put that on. oh yes. And oh yeah, that is gonna look so much better. Some black cranks for it too. Same ones, SEV Ridge yeah. cranks, just in black. Yeah, two black. Okay, yeah, I'm imagining that on there. That's yeah. gonna look the part. In the external cable routing, as much as yeah, it's missing a feature that the uh, the fast ripper has. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because yeah, I mean yeah. that makes it so much easier to reroute your cables yeah. and your brakes and everything. I feel like it's not as aesthetic, but definitely lower maintenance. Oh. And that is American style bottom bracket, sealed bearings. Definitely one of like the lower maintenance options you can do for a BMX style bike of any variety. The whole idea of press fit bottom brackets being an annoyance, that's more of like a mountain bike, road bike thing. But for beefy setups like this and tra more traditional BMX bikes, American or mid-style bottom brackets work really well. Just in terms of like product knowledge. Let's hear that again. On the flyer, which is like the, the cheaper option, they put, instead of hydros, they put some mechanicals on it. On a flyer frame to, for, I guess for cheaper cost, because flyers are like less cheap or less expensive. True. So here's me learning about the big bikes. The Ripper line is, I'm guessing, then a higher price yeah, point than yeah. the Flyer line? So the Flyers are like, Flyers retail at like, I think 1100 taxes in, and Rippers come up to like 1300 taxes in. That makes sense. And that's Canadian dollars. I'm assuming that's different for American yeah, dollars, right? But the Rippers always have the loop end. The flyer oh, yeah. Down. The classic loop tail. That is. I mean, in the 80s, they did that because it was stronger than uh, welding two separate tubes to a dropout. Now it's strength-wise about 50-50, but that is just a style feature, which I really like on these things. The flyers don't have that, though. Flyers are just a traditional dropout? Yeah. There we go, loop tails. That's your big feature. The There's dropout a... is kind of different than on my, like, bead locks then, too. Oh, yeah, this one's kind of cool. It's got, like, a little, like, reinforced section there instead yeah. of just being straight. Nice. And their, their build quality on these things is really getting better every time I see more of them. Not that it was ever bad, but it's <laughs> definitely getting significantly better the more I look at it. This is going to be wicked. So it's got the wider V-rubber tires going on to it. The originals are great, but they just, you know, there's something about those V-rubbers. If you do wheelies, everyone seems to love those V-rubbers. I guess it's the way they handle. Like, they just have that ride quality, from what I'm told, compared to pretty much everything else. So putting a set of those guys on. And then this bike is for Tristan's dad, Donovan, who is a tall man. So we're doing big bars on there. And some nice Shimano Dior brakes for some wicked stopping power. Right now, just pulling the disc off the front because 
they never run more than one brake on these guys, so it's just getting the rear brake. You should see my dad's next bike is um is his next quad angle. What is he running two brakes on that one? Yeah. There we go. I stand corrected. He he's probably the only person in the world though. <laughs> He's really the only people that actually really ride front brakes on. On SCs, no one really rides two brakes. I mean, there are lots of front brake tricks that I imagine these yeah. would be good for, right? Like, oh, sorry, I think uh, I'm lying. On the Fat Ripper, a lot of people run front brakes on the Fat Ripper. The 26 by 3.5. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like, Arl Osborne has one, actually. Yeah, I always see him doing a lot of tricks on his. Yeah, I watch him on YouTube. Like, uh, R.L. Osborne, that's a legendary name. He's cool. I like him. I like that he started a YouTube channel. That is pretty awesome. He's still nice, too. Yeah, he's got style. Oh, man. That looks so much better on there. Like, normally I really like how tan sidewalls look, but there's something about that just thick black tire that just works on this setup. You know what's crazy too? They have, we have, remember the bike I brought in yesterday? It has these tires with tan walls. My dad was like, yo, we should just put tan walls on it. Ooh. And we're like, yo, he's gonna, he's putting these ones on first and if he doesn't like how they look, then he's gonna put the tan walls on instead. Those would look cool too, but I don't know, I, I really like how that looks as it I'm is. Saying, I just love how all black looks like. Yeah. I love how the thick tires, it makes the bike just look so like, strong, like. It does. The more I, I the more I see these bikes, the more I work with them, the more I like the kind of proportions they have. Like they just the same thing as BMX, where they just have that or well, traditional BMX, where they feel strong and beefy and responsive, but not heavy and clunky. It's just that perfect Goldilocks style of bike. You know what I like about SC2 on this bike, the HD the HD Ripper and the HD Flyer, they actually made the the fork a little bigger. So you can run 2.8s on there, because I guess they... Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that being, like, a tight thing with some of the other bikes. Yeah. Because it's funny, so on the 20... On the 2020 bikes, the forks are skinny, and they couldn't run 2.8s on it, and there was a lot of, there was a lot of complaints about it. So in 2021, SE made, like, a bow-leg fork, but it was really, really, really big. So and there was a lot, like, you could run 2.8s on it, but it's still, like, there's still a lot of space, so... They got a lot of criticism for that too. Mm. And then, um, so they skinnier. They, they made it a little bit skinnier, but still able to clear 2.8 easily. So when I said Goldilocks, that that was actually a good description. So that is the Goldilocks fork, not yeah. too wide, not too skinny, just right. Well, Tristan's getting that set up. Steven's actually doing proper work. This is what we call a warranty check. It is a full tune-up, so it gets everything done. That's brakes, gears, cleaning, lubrication, tightening bearings, truing wheels, installing parts. We just call it a warranty check because when you buy a bike from us, they're included. So those are the tune-ups that our customers do not pay for. They just get free service because they bought the bikes from us. So now that Tristan has all this apart, it's a good opportunity to show you how the bottom bracket works. So this one, there's no threads in there. It is attached by being pressed together. So you've got the frame shell itself here, and this gold piece is essentially a cup that's pressed directly into the frame. Then your sealed bearing is pressed directly into the cup. Inside, it's maybe difficult to see, but there is a little sleeve in there. You may be able to say moving around. That acts as a spacer to keep everything from imploding under the pressure of the bolts on the side. And everything sandwiches together on this spindle here. The only threads on it are in the end, so bolts from the side put tension on it, and then the pinch bolts on the side of the crank arms secure everything down in place. It's a fairly simple system. It's been in use for a really long time, but it's one of those, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of deals. It's got everything together. That fits so nice on there. And this is cool because that sprocket is bored to exactly 19 millimeters to fit that spindle. Whereas the old one, it's the uh, 15 16 inch bore, which needs a reducer in there. So great quality stuff, but not quite as good as what's going on there. That's pretty awesome. That's fitted right there. Yeah, I like it. 
A disappointing moment here. Turns out the new chain's a little short. It's gonna have to run the original chain. Looks like Primo intended that one to be for like a 20 inch bike with a smaller frame size and the 25.9 micro gearing, not the, uh, the bigger gearing that these bikes use. So original chain for now is gonna be fine, but it's a nice heavy duty KMC, so that's not actually a bad thing. That'll be okay. Doing the bars, 10 inch SEs on there. And then, yeah, we have decided the basic Shimano brake, as much as Donovan seems to like the aesthetic of this lever a lot more, just the sheer power of the Dior setup, that's what we're going with. That's what I'm going to do. If you don't like them, then you can trade with me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, lots of other er, brakes we can trade for. And if I had room for disc brakes on my bikes, I would want a Dior. New Theory Grips on there. That's a newer company in Canada. Looks like they're distributed by OGC, so the same company that does like We The People and Salt and Radio and all those brands. They make some cool products. Nice, squishy, classic mushroom style grip there. Ah, that looks nice. Thanks, buddy. Anytime. Thank you. And he's gone. The dude. <laughs> oh yeah. That's a sweet bike. Okay, now I'm taking this thing for a test ride. First thing I gotta say is, oh my god, it is tall. I have never ridden one of these bikes with bars this big before. Obviously I don't ride a ton of these bikes to begin with, but Wow, this is very comfortable and upright. That brake's nice on there. Woo, lots of stopping power. Yeah, the endo tricks are a lot harder on something this big than my bikes, but I'm gonna give it another go. Oh yeah. I got some perspective on this. I'm taking Tristan's fast ripper out for a little test ride. See what it stacks up against uh, the big ripper like. Yeah, I still can't wheelie like that, so I'm just gonna be riding this thing like a normal person. Still can't wheelie, but I'm still gonna put that clip on YouTube because even just getting it up there, that was so much easier on a proper wheelie bike than on anything else I've tried. Like, obviously, I've tried it on mountain bikes, hybrids, whatever. Oh my god, that was so much easier on the Fast Ripper. I really like the Fast Ripper. <laughs> Wild man. Alright, so we're just wrapping up our video here. This is our showpiece for the day. I'm just going to be giving it a little bit of the old bike lust. This stuff, if you haven't seen any of my old videos, 
talk about the stuff all the time. It is mothers or armor all for bikes. Stuff's really good, so I'm gonna give it a nice spritz.